Hey guys, this is Darren Benton again from Performance Motor Coaches out of Texas. We are up in Indiana today. We're actually at the RV Hall of Fame. We've got a customer coming in tomorrow to pick up this coach. I want to make it a little bit easier on him as we were up here anyhow to get this coach picked up. I want to do a quick uh, walkthrough video, but also talk about a few things that have kind of gone down in the last year. So September 28th last year, which is uh, I guess a year and about three days, we sold the exact same coach. That was our very first Renegade Classic. Um, since then, I don't know how many we've done, but we've done a lot. And in that time, we're I think we're up to 18,000 subscribers on YouTube. So definitely happy for all you guys that have been liking and tagging and following all the videos. It definitely generates, it just kind of grows exponentially. Really appreciate all the involvement there. And then of course, you know, it goes to other platforms, but it's definitely cool to have uh, all you guys tuning in, checking out the videos, but pretty special video for me in that basically one year to the date, almost, we're doing the exact same rig, and that's kind of what got everything started with Renegade. Um, it's been a good partnership. Um, I'm, you know, pretty picky. They do a really good job at finishing their coaches. Um, a good network of people there, uh, getting to know those guys more and more each day. But it's definitely beneficial to not only me but also the customers as well. So we'll go ahead and jump in the coach itself. This is a Peterbilt 567. This is a Renegade Classic CBF. So the Classic Series is basically a little bit different wall structure than all the rest of their coaches. And it's a totally customizable unit as of right now. I'm sure things will change in time, but as of right now, it's a customizable unit. And because they actually cut the wall structure in-house that allows them to do a lot of different uh, floor plans, a lot of different configurations. So that's more of their custom feature. So uh, this particular floor plan is a two bath with bunk beds does have the optional bunk over, which is actually standard on a Peterbilt. So it's, you know, to me, one of the most desirable floor plans out there. They just sell themselves. I've uh, been doing this for quite some time. Uh, and with, uh, with show hauler, I mean, same deal. If it's a two bath bunk bed, they just sell, they sell themselves. So not really an issue there. Great resell and, you know, good floor plan for, you know, whether you have, you know, a family or, you know, sometimes we get people that have three total generations uh, going down with them. So grandparents, uh, adult kids, and then little kids. And you can really sleep everybody in a coach like this. There's a lot of room inside. We'll get everything checked out. Let's go ahead and cruise around just a little bit. So 18,000 pound front axle, single 120 gallon fuel tank on the other side, uh, all locking baggage doors. And there again, throughout the, you know, throughout the ages, I've been talking about how nice their baggage doors. Probably the industry leader, in my opinion. So dual latches, very, very stout. So we can't break this for you guys. Um, the cool thing is, you know, they're all uh, spray lined inside. So basically, like a bed liner material. Um, makes it easy to be able to wash out, rinse out. If you had some really heavy parts, you might consider throwing like a like a rubber mat in there. But uh, definitely a lot of storage, and it's nice having that extra bed line, and that is an upgrade from there. This does have the Aqua Hot, which is a boiler system. So this is your heater uh, and your hot water heater all in one. We've done extensive videos on that. Uh, great for really cold weather environments. It is plumbed the engine, so as we're getting uh, a little bit cooler going in from fall into winter. Great to have that. will keep the coach nice and warm without having to use any extra fuel driving up and down the road. So cool setup there. You can really kind of tell the quality of these things when you go slamming them. Does have the optional outdoor television right here. With a little sound bar underneath. Cool thing about the sound bar is you can link your phone to it doing uh, you know, any kind of Pandora or anything like that. And there's a little USB, if you can catch this guy. We have a new camera person that's helping us out. We really appreciate her coming out to help us. A little USB there. Makes it handy to be able to charge your phone while you're hanging out outside. Good to go there. And I'll drop this. Gotta come down the coach a little bit. So live tandem axles. So the, essentially, uh, your front axle turns all the time. You can actually lock the front axle in, pause the traction left to right, and then you can lock the back axle in. So uh, this is actually going up to Steamboat. Oddly enough, we got two coaches the next month. They're going up to that area. So those guys will want to be able to get in and out of there whenever it gets a little snowy. And having you know true locking tandem axles is a big, big uh, helper in that. If you were talking any kind of, any kind of tag axle, uh, definitely a lot of slippage. Go rearwards of the axle here. 
This is kind of, there again, one of my favorites. This is what they call the three-quarter pass-through. So essentially, it goes all the way underneath there. So if you had like a large ladder, um, some type of uh, big table or whatever, it can go all the way underneath there. So a fair amount of room. Not quite Class A, uh, but you know, little features like that make it a little bit more Class A-esque. Rearwards right here, uh, we got some extra tile that they uh, always uh, ship with it. Knock on wood, we've not had any tile breakage. Uh, you know, we've obviously sold these things used throughout the years. Um, generally, whenever a tile is broken, it's because someone's broke it. It didn't just break itself. A uh, little central vac in there, and there is a port uh, for the central vac to be able to use inside or outside. So nice setup there. Get all this stuff closed up. Big combo slide right there, so it does have two windows uh, in the bunks there. We'll walk around to the back of the coach. Um, you know, kind of what's very signature of the Classic is they don't put a rear cap on it, and then they'll all have that aluminum extrusion up top. Uh, you can option to have that painted, uh, white to match the coach, or you know, obviously whenever you paint the entire coach, they will paint the aluminum extrusion. But if you're looking for Classics, um, you know, kind of the telltale would be the square back and then the aluminum extrusion up top there. So 2022 was the first year for the Gen Y hitch. Uh, probably, you know, by far, I mean, the very best hitch out there because it's so convertible. So it will be set up with a two and five sixteenths ball assembly that will go in there, a regular two inch ball. Uh, it does have the sleeve for uh, be able to do a tow bar here. I have it optioned up top here. Technically, I could have run it right in the bottom and then done like a bicycle rack up on this top hole. So really cool setup. Um, and those guys did a great job at coming up with something that basically suits all needs um, because it does really get difficult out there whenever you're talking about, well, let's get this adapter, let's get this adapter. And so it kind of a definitely a big pain in the rear. So that's all in one. Uh, and from my understanding, uh, this collar right here uh, the, on the older units will accept these. It's just a matter of um, what kind of fiberglass is around there. So don't hold that, don't hold me to that, but uh, it's something we definitely need to kind of look into because it's a nice setup. So we kind of come around. I left my Jeep on. Uh, we're headed over to campground to set that up here in a minute, but wanted a nicer open area to be able to go around and talk about it. Six hundred horse. You want to hang out there? I'll open up this guy. Basically, a fifteen liter Cummins, uh, and it does have the ultra shift transmission. So, monster, monster motor there. These are some of the hydronic lines that we talked about. The waste heat from the engine headed back to the uh, aqua hot system there. Of course, you know, if we if it went back to Texas, this thing would be spotless clean. Renegade does a pretty good job of getting the coaches cleaned up after production, but uh, we apologize for a little bit of that stuff inside the fender well there. And there's a lock. Don't forget the lock. I forgot the lock. And I better latch it right now before I forget about it and stop on the interstate and have the hood go shooting forward. So come around over here. We'll kind of run down this side of the coach. We'll jump inside and see how much room, see how much room is inside the coach. So the def tank gets uh, relocated back here because you have a jack between. Chassis batteries right there, house batteries right there. Uh, this coach was on order and the customer uh, optioned up for the batteries. So we have two 270 amp hour uh, GC3 Battleborn slash Dragonfly, it's the same company, but they're 270 amp hour lithium batteries right there. And they do have heat built in them as well. And there is a Victron battery monitor way underneath there. It's really hard to see, but the cool thing about the Victron battery monitor is the Bluetooth, so you don't have to get outside to look at it. Dual inverters here, which we try to spec all of our coaches with dual inverters. The idea being you'll take uh, one for primary use, the other for secondary use, and the other being on secondary use, you can actually power an AC, drive them down the road so you don't have to run your generator. So pretty cool setup. And then of course with the uh, amount of lithiums that are on board here, you could probably get overnight uh, with those two lithiums running one air conditioner. And that's only the middle air conditioner. 
open up the wet bay there again people that have watched me something I continually go back to it how nice and clean the wet bay is no stickers other than these I mean obviously this kind of warnings right here but as far as from an operational standpoint you don't have to worry about stickers falling off coming off uh, if you want to add a macerator pump there's already a, a port for it um, all this is water jetted right here and then it's powder coated so it makes it a not really nice setup to be able to you know use the coach 10 years down the road and not to worry about these stickers falling off and then like well which, which valve goes which way, which way and what's uh, what handle goes to what so definitely cool setup doesn't have a little power cord drill right here power retract but it just makes it nice you know if you you know if you forget a garden hose especially for me you know we're picking these things up and I can go put water in. I don't have to worry about gathering up a garden hose and basically that's dead space back there anyhow uh, we're running into cold weather use there are there's a hydronic register here so all the firefly inside whether you're using the firefly app or the pad inside will tell you your temperature here and you can actually set your temperature and your wet bay here so cool setup get all these guys closed up and we'll go rearwards and then we'll jump inside you can see what it's like driving up and down the road a little bit with all the slides in the end position so 12.5 Onan generator, that's the largest generator that Renegade will install. That is the largest RVIA approved generator. Uh, basically because these are true RVs and they're in, a, in the NADA guide, they have to abide by the RVIA uh, rules. So that's the largest generator you can get. Anything over 41 foot from Renegade will come with a 12.5 and will also come with three air conditioners. So there again, kind of hard for me not to do anything. Uh, at least 41 foot because uh, I want to do larger larger generator I want to do uh, three total rooftops as well so we'll kind of jump in here I don't know if you can catch it there's a little buddy plug so the idea there is uh, you know whether you had a big trailer you were a big stacker trader or just a trailer with an air conditioner or you know if you're going out with uh, you know maybe maybe your your kids just have a bumper pull or something like that you can actually plug into that. It's a 50 amp plug um, as far as that generator you know easily not a problem to run four air conditioners in in two total campers so uh, makes it nice to be able to have somebody come along with you and just be able to utilize one generator so we'll kind of walk around real quick so this is just standard white classic uh, we optioned for the uh, black slide toppers and some of the black accessories on the outside uh, like on the Cascadia's we'll do like a blackout package the Peterbilt because there's so much chrome we you know generally this thing just kind of leave that as is so really nice tiled entryway I forgot my little mat at the house that says performance motor coaches but we'll get that in there for the customer before he comes in tomorrow but you can kind of see how much room you have and it's a it's a very very usable coach driving up and down the road you know you could be able to put kids in the couch the dinette there are seat belts here and there's seat belts in the forward facing portion of the dinette but you know if you need to get to the kitchen do a little bit of work you need to get in your refrigerator grab some water or whatever out of the refrigerator you could even do a little bit of laundry driving up and down the road or plop down in the bunk beds and then I don't know if you can catch this little bathroom right here I won't jump in but you can kind of get the idea so even be able to utilize the front bath so we're going to attempt to pause the video real quick and then we will run all the slide outs in the out position okay we're back we got all the slides in the out position see how much extra room in here lots of room all the way around uh, so still a really nice usable coach whether the slides are in or out uh, as far as going down the road you know if you were parked overnight like in a truck stop or something like that or in a rest stop and not having to worry about uh, running the slides out but here we are with everything out uh, as far as the, the color combination in this, uh, kind of, well, there again, one of my go-tos, one, one of my favorite. This is the Burnish Sable. I generally don't ever do high sheen. 
Hysheen means fingerprints, and I don't like fingerprints. So this is, they call it the Epic Slab. I mean, that's a heck of a name, Epic Slab, but I just call them a flat cabinet. What I like about them there, again, uh, you don't have any raised panel to collect uh, dirt on. Just a nice, simple, clean look. We always option everything with the uh, wood valances over the top of the windows instead of doing any kind of a material like this that maybe people won't like, maybe people like, but I don't particularly like that. So I just like to do the wood lenses, just nice clean look. So burnished sable, flat cabinets, does have pelt ultra leather. A lot of different selections on the ultra leather there, but there again, just kind of my go-to. This is a quick silver wall, which is basically silver, and then a breccia floor. There again, I don't like any of the high polished stuff. I just like a regular honed finish. Just nice clean look uh, that doesn't have things that show scratches, dings, nicks, fingerprints, footprints, and whatnot. So we go over here to the galley. Nice little layout right here. Little baby pull out trash can. I really like that little trash can guy right there. And uh, you could option it without. Uh, the issue is put the subwoofer down there. I don't know why they don't put the subwoofer on its side, but we could always take and change that up to you have you have you some more room there. All the cabinetry, great quality. This right here, they love the silverware drawer right here. I don't know anybody that has that much silverware while they're out camping, but here it is. I guess you put lots of pins and pens and pencils. All the drawers are all dovetail construction as well. They do nice little things. So like if these little buttons pop off here or there, if you had to remove those, you get extra. So just a single base and sink right there. You could option that for a dual and it's only stainless steel as of right now would be the option. Convection microwave. It does have induction cooktop as well. I uh, do most of my cooking outside, so not too much of an issue. But uh, you know, you could you could technically option this without a cooktop. Uh, you can option it without a microwave if you need it. So cool setup. 18 cubic foot Samsung. This is a residential refrigerator. They're again my favorites, my go-tos. Uh, just not um, not a big fan of the RV refrigerator, and just a nice clean look. The older styles did have the handles. This unfortunately is the newer style right here. We talked about this earlier. Washer dryer, stacked washer dryer. Uh, it is vented, so instead of uh, your pair of Levi's taking two hours to dry, it's still going to take about an hour uh, just because it's only a 110 element in there. So a little pocket door, actually, whoa, sorry. The uh, individual pantry drawers starting in 2022, these became standard. The older style was this big mass pullout. The issue with the big giant mass pull out by the time you put your cans of hominy and coca-cola and whatnot they get came way too way too heavy um so nicer set if you don't have to worry about a 400 pound shelf come flying out at you some storage there storage there pretty minimal but does have storage there is a little pocket door right here to be able to isolate the bunk area this is whenever i go in the bathroom so um, you know, it is a smaller bathroom, but you can still sit here. We we'll close the door. Decent amount of room right there. We'll go in the shower. The very first one last year, they actually ran this in about two inches, and inches make all the difference in the world. So, uh, if you would have seen this video last year, you would have seen me do this number. But here, you know, I'm able to spread my shelves, my shoulders out a little bit. Um, they've gone over to a sliding bar right here. So for the big kids, small kids. And then it is nice having the, I guess I need a little adjustment there. Uh, <laughs> I'm not giving up, I better give up. Anyway, so this makes it pretty nice right here to be able to conserve water a little bit. And then instead of having to turn your faucet off there, you can just turn it off on the head itself. Come around here, a little shower seat if you need it. Be able to have a seat if you had anybody elderly, kiddos, or if you needed to shave your legs. Decent little storage right here. Sorry. <laughs> and then also underneath, there's a hydronic register in here for heat. There's one back here. Large pocket doors to go across. Does have a little opening right here, and that's the only downfall to the combination. Uh, closet bunk bed slide, but that's the only way they build it. So it kind of is what it is. 66 inch wide bed, 80 inches. The water tanks are underneath. So I'll take and flip this guy up. 
So 150 gallons of water on board. You'll see everything's really easy to access. These are two hydronic registers right here. And so basically what that boiler does, it heats coolant and the coolant is then circulated throughout the coach with a little 12 volt fan. So nice, easy to use setup. Very, very efficient. There's a little pad underneath here. That's standard. Be able to run your lights, be able to run your generator, um, be able to do a few different things right there. Of course, always keep in mind you can use your app on your phone to be able to run the entire coach, your slides, um, basically everything you can do on the pad up front, you can do on your app as well. Uh, but if you forget it, jump up there, turn your lights on and off. Go back here to the back master. There again, much larger shower. This is actually 41 inches between here and here. I think this is like 30, 32 or 36. So monster shower right here for the um, for the bigger kids. There again, you think it's gonna? Yeah, this one's this one does slide for us right here. Uh, but nice setup here. No skylight. Skylights are bad. I don't like skylights. So uh, just if you're taking a hot shower, open up that guy right there. Get some of the moisture out. All these uh, shelves are all adjustable here. There's a lot of room all the way around here. Definitely a nice setup. And then same deal back here. You know, most of your loans you'd have to take and roll up unless you have that many pill bottles. But like I'm flip flopping around. Um, this is all. If you want to back up just a skosh. Nice closet right here. Your egress is over there. Uh, this is an option where you could do an egress on this side and no window. Done a few different things. We've also done some egresses out of the master bath as well. So if you didn't want any windows in here, a lot of different things. I like this right here. You can see there's all the way through uh, to be able to put clothes in there. And then a lot of storage underneath as well. We're gonna cruise up front. You can check out the opening here. So if this was a Cascadia, we could have opened this up a little bit larger just right here, um, but still not a horrible opening. It does have this little guy right here. Um, not a huge fan, but what it does, it, you know, in really cold environments, you have just a little bit of barrier between uh, the cab and the conversion. Same deal whenever it's 100 plus degrees. Uh, you know, you, the air in here can basically stay really warm and not have that, that transfer of heat uh, or cold back and forth. So this is a 60 inch wide bunk over. Uh, standard is 54. You can go all the way up to a 66. I kind of feel like the 66 is like a big giant brim on your ball cap. So to me, it's a pretty good setup as far as the, the 60. 95 inch length mattress you can fit because it's a little bit thinner mattress you can fit just a regular set of uh, uh, queen sheets on that little shelf up there with a uh, usb and 110 it would be nice in time to be able to uh, eliminate this shelf drop your window down just a little bit and then be able to put like you say your phone up, up on top of that valance instead of rolling over and knocking your noggin on that, that, that at night right there. Um, but try to option everything with the window on this side, cabinets on this side. Uh, there again, you just don't need a mattress any more length. Nice to be able to have that additional storage there. Really won't get too involved in the cab itself. Um, you know, it's a really nice, well-appointed cab. One of the, probably my favorite things about it um, is it has all uh, factory nav system that's uh, the, the all the cameras are integrated into these are the factory seats instead of some of the aftermarket seats they throw in them that to me are very very uncomfortable but uh, and these do they're on turn turning pedestals so you can take and flop these seats around uh, just a nice modern looking cab don't know when they uh, redid this cab but like you know you start talking about some of the older uh, older units I mean they ran those things forever you know Volvo did a a slight upgrade, but it's still the same basic dash they've had for almost 20 years now. So just nothing wild and crazy there. We'll kind of run through this uh, Firefly real quick. Home menu, basically lots of redundancy inside the Firefly, water pumps, heaters, generator and whatnot. You know, you go to your next, so you just got master lights right there and then this will break down uh, each individual light, including the exterior from there. We'll go to the next your electrical menu, uh, nice thing, this does have a power management system on board to let you know how many amps you're drawing off each leg if you're plugged into 50 amp. Uh, 
you can turn your inverters on and off right here. You can kind of figure out what your batteries are doing to a certain degree. Not full integration with the uh, with the lithiums. Hopefully, in time, in due time, they instead of you instead of seeing your voltage right here, you'll see zero to 100 percent, just like if you're looking at your cell phone. You don't care what the voltage is on your phone. You want to know how much you got left. Um, thermostats here. So there's three zones, uh, and then there's also your base. So that would be your wet base. That's the temperature in the wet bay right now. Let's basically activate it because we don't have the aqua on, on. It will give us a fault, but we could turn the burner on. Boom. And we're cooking. Turn this back off here. But uh, lots of redundancy, vent fans and whatnot. And a lot of switches throughout the coach do the same thing. Uh, already there. Uh, in motion satellite. And then your ceiling fans themselves run to your slides and your awning right here. And then you do some leveling there, so awning there, leveling there. Uh, and there is an app as well from Equalizer to be able to use. I think there's like four or five apps you can t potentially use in this coach. So pretty easy setup. And then to be able to connect into the, so once you download the app right here, this mobile app, you could scan it or just search for this app right here. And then this is the basically the coach configuration and then make sure you save this pin number because no one will ever figure it out. So uh, pretty simple right there. Um, glad you guys, this probably has turned into a close to a 30 minute video. Uh, appreciate you guys always tuning in. I know if you're watching it right now, you went through the entire video and so appreciate that. Um, you know, you guys really support our business quite a bit by you guys liking these videos. I just, I can't tell you uh, how much I appreciate that because it really drives more and more business to us. Appreciate everybody. Uh, this customer's coming in tomorrow. We're going to get him set up in a campground. We're actually going to do a tour of the factory with him. And then he's probably going to stay one more night just to make sure there's no issues with it. Um, nice to be able to do. I uh, was up here doing some other stuff. Uh, be able to meet the customer here. It's not always the case. Uh, but same type treatment there at the dealership in Texas. You guys come out, stay for a day or two. You know, if it's on Wednesday through Saturday, we'll go to the barbecue joint. We'll have, have some lunch, have some dinner and whatnot. But uh, really appreciate all you guys, make sure you guys continue to like, tag, subscribe. Make sure you guys keep on coming back. Thanks.